So I'm just going to run you through a handful of the proofs and um, how I'm going to use triangles and each other to prove these, okay? Because some of them are really quite profound, but they, they make quite easy statements. Okay, so for example, let's have a look at number seven. So this is angle at the center, there's the center, right? Um, is twice the angle, so that's why I have a two. The angle at the circumference standing on the same arc. So this idea of an angle standing on an arc is literally thinking about the parts of the angle, the two intervals that form the angle is kind of like the legs, right? So it's standing there. Okay, so that's what you should visualize. By the way, just as a tip, you're going to go through a whole bunch of these proofs and you'll meet them in exams as well. If you stare, right, and you're like, it, it's not clicking, right? I've already told you the very, very first tip was draw the thing, okay? Like I said, as you draw, here's the reason why it works in case you want it. It's not just black magic, right? As you draw, it forces your brain to understand the relationships between the different points and the different lines and the different arcs better than if you just look at the thing. If you just look at the thing, okay? In exactly the same way that in a conversation they tell you, oh, okay, if you want to get to know someone better or like remember their name or something like that, what you do is you say back to them in different words the thing they're saying to you rather than just sort of nodding nodding, nodding, and then five minutes later you're like, man, what were we even talking about, okay? You force yourself to articulate, you force yourself to construct, okay? The other tip is, uh, and this is why it's particularly on this one, if after you've drawn it, it's still not clicking, turn the thing upside down, turn the thing upside down. You'd be surprised, just like drawing, at how effective that kind of thing is. And it's useful here because you can't necessarily see, oh, it's standing, right? Because the language does not is not as clear, right? Uh, but if you turn around, it's pretty obvious. Now, how would you go about proving this? It's worth mentioning that for this particular property, you can actually draw different diagrams to represent this. For example, here's another one. Uh, angle at... There you go. So this is the same situation, right? I've got an angle at the center, which is double the angle at the circumference standing on the same arc. Okay, so the proof I'm about to give you doesn't quite exactly work for this, even though it works for this, because the configuration is slightly different. Okay, but it's not that hard. How would we construct this thing? How would we prove that these angles are the way they are? Yeah, Eddie. Uh, the triangle on the left, you prove it's a triangle. Okay, good. So because, again, we said triangles, and because it's such a special track, you've got all these special properties, you've got radii flying everywhere. Right? Everywhere. So therefore, as suggested, I've got that. So where do I go from there? Next yep. Very good. So as soon as I've got, if I define that, just let that be anything you like. We'll call, we've called it theta. That makes it theta over there because it's isosceles. And then right there, with no further constructions, the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite two interior ends. Two theta. Really easy, right? When you come down to here, you're going to take advantage of another thing because you've got the radii everywhere. You have isosceles triangles everywhere. Okay. Um, if I wanted to prove that this angle in the center, which I just indicate with a dot, sorry, yeah, angle in a semicircle, I just indicate the diameter with a dot there. How would I do it? One line. Okay. Form the isosceles triangles, right? And then what you've got here is. If I call this alpha, that's alpha, right? Isosceles, you happy with that? If I call this beta, I've got a beta over there, right? Because again, isosceles triangles. I'm done. Do you see it yet? What's the angle sum of a triangle? It's 180 degrees. So I've got two alpha plus two beta is 180. Therefore, alpha plus beta is 90, right? Just like that. I think that's really beautiful, right? Number nine flows straight out of either of these two, right? Probably, probably seven's the easiest, right? I've got a whole bunch of angles all in the circumference, and apparently they're all equal. How'd you go about showing them? Now, congruence is going to be a bit tricky. Congruence will be tricky because with these it's not obvious, but if I put one over here, it's still true, but you better believe that's not congruent, right? It's not even close to congruent. In fact, none of my original ones were congruent either. Um, so what would you do? Where are you going to go from there, Aaron? Uh, prove all the relationship between the angle at the circumference and 
an angle at the center. Yeah, bingo. All right, so here we go. I've already proved this, and that was easy, right? So these are all standing on the same arc, right? They're all on the circumference. So if I make one, say, here, right in the middle, if you just start from this guy and you don't know these two, right? Well, this angle is at the circumference standing on this arc down here, so this one must be double that. It's twice the angle at the circumference because it's at the center. Right? But once you know this, this one over here is also standing on the same arc, right? So it must be another way, the converse obviously, you could say instead of saying it's twice the angle, you can say the one at the circumference is half the angle at the center. And then you do it again, right? So there's like a missing piece there, just like this was a missing piece here. 